What up and welcome to the Beneath the Dirt Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Bone. Thank you for tuning in. Episode 221 in the high. What's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Hope everybody's staying safe out there. All that good shit. Hope y'all doing good. Staying safe. Enjoying the season of the pumpkin. Because it's damn near over. Depending on when you listen to this, today could be the last day. Or it's already done and over. If you're here looking for Hollow Wicked news, Hollow Wicked hasn't even happened as of this recording. If you're looking for Fright Fest news, Fright Fest has not happened as of this recording. We'll be covering all that shit next week, but uh, <laughs> yeah, none of that shit's happened yet. But we here, we live, we got shit to talk about, man. We fucking, let's just... Get right into it. Go peep. Fago Lovers YouTube channel. I joined that five-piece crew. Joker's Gallery. Mike Sears. Luke Dagoon. Dagoon's Cloud Gallery. For the Bloody Sunday special. Top five ICP. Darkest ICP songs. That's what I should say. Top five darkest ICP songs. That episode was mad fun to do. I love kicking it with the... Uh, Goons Clout Gallery, the five-piece crew over there on the Fago Lovers channel. Shit is always a good time. And I think it reflects in the shows. And shout out to Joker's Gallery for his editing skills and all that good shit, man. That dude fucking throws the fuck down on those shows. And uh, yeah, go peep that shit. I'll leave a link in the description of the YouTube video and the podcast apps, if your particular podcast app shows the descriptions of or not that I put in every week, I don't know because I don't know every podcasting app. Uh, I know Spotify does, I know Apple does, I don't know about everybody else, but anyway, go peep that five piece. That shit is fire, son. Let's get it some new music. Stop dicking around, stop wasting fucking time. Vinny Paz, Vinny Paz is back. With his new single, Faith Healer. This is the second single off his upcoming album. And this shit is fire. Fire. I like this one better than the first single that he dropped about a month ago. Something like that. Slight Rebellion off Madison. That shit was fire. But goddamn, this new single, Faith Healer, is fire so goddamn good the beat i think sea lance did the beat on here which is just a grimy grimy fucking beat from sea lance love this shit and Vinny paz just coming with that fucking gangsta shit on this track i love this shit man the hook though Vinny paz hook game is like just getting better and better As time goes on, the hook on here is fucking fire. If you don't know where I'm at, don't tempt me. Let off this drum till it's empty. Oh, god damn. Plug gonna spill the trill, come get me. Still you gonna feel who sent me. God damn, this shit is fire. My favorite song that came out this week, Vinny Paz, Faith Healer. This shit is a fucking Banger, man. I don't know what else to say. I said it 17 times already. But go peep Vinny Paz, Faith Healer. I'm fucking excited for his new album. That's dropping November 11th. Yeah. Shit's gonna be a fucking banger. The new album called Tortured in the Name of God's Unconditional Love. Come on, son. Who's doing it like Vinny Paz like that? Who's doing it like Pazzy? Pazzy. Yeah, go peep that shit. It's just fire. Another fucking banger that dropped this week. Mad Child, Obnoxious, with their new single, Skull Mask. This shit is fire. Come on. This is the third single off their upcoming album, uh, Demons, Monsters and Mobsters, right? That's the name of the album. This goddamn man. Obnoxious is that dude when he's rocking over production like this. Go back to the King Click review. I didn't, I wasn't really fucking with it. I don't think 
obnoxious in that setting over that production, that's not his, that's not where he could shine the best. This shit right here, this shit right here, this is where Obnoxious shines. This dude fucking kills it on here, man. So does Mad Child. Shit is fucking dope, man. Um, I'm hyped for the album. I'm hyped for the album. Three singles in, and all three have been dope. I still think probably the first single, Blackout, was probably my favorite, but this new one, Skull Mask, probably my second favorite. And that that work for it was sick jacking was no fucking sleeper either or no slouch either. That shit was a banger too. All three were dope, but man, getting me hyped for that shit. SRH Suburban Noise, you know, still doing the fucking thing, still doing the fucking thing, thing. You know what I mean? Let's go peep that shit. We got new Lex the Hexmaster. He dropped his new single. Amen. This is Lex the Hexmaster and Jake Palumbo. I think Jake Palumbo did the production on here. I didn't, you know, Lex was the only one spitting on here. This is a dope track. This isn't the grimy boom bab shit that I want to hear Lex on. But this was a dope track. Lex did his thing on here and the beat was dope. And I recommend it. If you fucking fuck with Lex the Hexmaster, I think you fuck with this track right here. But I still maintain I want to hear Lex on that grimy boom bap shit. But Amen was a banger. And I recommend peeping that shit if you haven't checked that shit out yet. Because it's dope. We got a new Donnie Menace. The Bag Reloaded is out right now. This dropped Friday. Now... When I put together my new music releases on Friday and the playlist on Friday, I do my best, my absolute best to make sure that I get everything that I would want in there. Now, there's a whole bunch of other music that comes out, you know, on Fridays that I don't put in the playlist. That's just because this is my playlist, this is my curation, this is what the fuck I'm putting together. And I somehow missed... Donnie Menace, the bag reloaded, to put it on the playlist, to give it the love that it needs, up on, you know, the, the new Music Friday drop and all that shit, but go peep this track, I did check it out, it's dope, Halloween shit from Donnie Menace over that boom bap shit, go peep out Donnie Menace's Chainsaws and Boomsticks. One of the dopest albums easily this year. Right out the gate. this That album is so fucking good. Still bumping that shit, man. Donnie Menace, Chainsaws and Boomsticks is a phenomenal album. That dude just crushed any expectation he had and put out a great album for 2022. Straight the fuck up. And this new song, The Bag Reloaded, is dope. Kind of following that vibe of Chainsaws and Boomsticks. So if you're fucking with that album, you'll fuck with this new single. And I hope Donnie Menace... Donnie Menace always been dope. But it seems like right now, he's fucking crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. So go peep that shit if you ain't checked it out yet. We got new Samson Samson of Dirtcore Music. He dropped a new song called Kill Mode featuring Crossworm. Produced by Crossworm. Last week, we were talking about Crossworm and his new single, I Still Hate, which is officially out on DSPs now. So if you haven't checked that song out yet, go peep that song out because that shit was a banger. Metal shit, rap metal shit at its finest, heavy as fuck, no pussy boy emo shit. It's that real fucking hard shit. This new Samson Samson kill mode featuring Crossworm. Not as heavy, but still a fucking a banger. I'm not complete. I'll be honest. I'm not completely sold on Samson Samson. I think this dude has potential. I fucks with Crossworm's production so heavy. Crossworm, for the longest time, didn't have anybody on his production outside of a couple features here and there. Um, 
So it's weird hearing other people on his production doing like full albums and shit. I think that's only happened one other time. I don't remember dude's name. Dude dropped an EP and then kind of fucking <laughs> disappeared in the wind. I don't know what the fuck happened with that. Um, but I, 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 I like seeing this come to fruition for Crossworm. Working with other artists, having them do shit on his production, put it out again, one of the fucking you want a dope mix master hit up crossworm like that shit going bumped like this song bump i still hate bump god damn but new samson samson uh kill mode out now we got new jaron benton seems like every few weeks jaron benton comes back with a new song we got the black october freestyle he dropped a music video for it as well no boom bap shit this time around Back to those like 808s, uh, trap style shit, but fucking just rapping his ass off on here. Jared Ben, the king of fucking dropping singles for the last three years, every like three weeks. We got new Knight Lavelle or Lovell. I don't, I don't, not quite sure how to pronounce his name, but G59, Gray 59, um, Suicide Boys record label. Their artists, they got Shakewell, Ramirez, of course, Suicide Boys, Knight Lavelle. His new single called I Spy is a fucking banger. If you're familiar with the G59 shit, then you know what kind of shit you're going to get with the G59. Peep out this new Knight Lavelle, I Spy. It's a dope, dope single. Go peep that shit. And then, let's see. The only album... I'll be talking about this week that dropped uh, new D Loke. D Loke linked up with S Dub for Drip Drops. The album is called Get Wet. D Loke of Cottonmouth Kings. New album is called Get Wet. The group name is Drip Drops, D Loke, and S Dub. I haven't listened to it yet. I haven't listened to it. I did include I did include this in the new Music Friday drop and on the playlist. Uh, but, you know, I might check it out at some point. I'm not sure yet. But all the albums or that album and every other song that I talked about is up on the Beneath the Dirt Weekly Bumps playlist. Go give that shit a follow on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. You can find the link at BeneathDirt.com where there is a merch link as well. All my social media pages are up at BeneathDirt.com, which brings you to my link tree page. But it's just a nice little central hub for everything you need for Beneath the Dirt. And speaking of DLOC, is DLOC and Chucky Chuck linking back up? It's looking like it. It seems like there's something brewing behind the scenes with d Suburban Noise, Cottonmouth Kings. I don't know what's going on, but we got d commenting on Chucky Chuck's posts on social media. Chucky Chuck commenting on d shit. We have talked about it in the past. Chucky Chuck hasn't necessarily been the biggest fan of d in the last few years. But it seems like the henchmen are getting back together. The Cottonmouth Kings page on Facebook wrote, there's something big coming that's brewing behind the smoke. Who wants to see d Chucky Chuck, and D-Lo stomp some stages together again? If you do, tag hashtag d DGAF and share this picture around the kingdom. Hashtag OG KMK vibes. And it's a picture of d and Chucky Chuck up on stage and instantly when I saw this shit I'm like yo something's going on behind the scenes it's it's been brewing if you pay attention to the social media pages like I said they're commenting on each other's shit I saw Suburban Noise commenting on d shit this is all new this is all new stuff that's happening in the Cottonmouth Kingdom, Suburban Noise World, and 
again, I've been saying it. We need a proper Cottonmouth Kings reunion, right? d is out touring solo now. He's not touring under the Cottonmouth Kings name. That's another reason why I think there's shit happening in the kingdom as we speak because why all of a sudden just stop touring with the Cottonmouth Kings name? Obviously, the Cottonmouth Kings name is bigger than the d name, right? Like, more the average underground music listener who might dabble into it a little bit or, you know, I, don't, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Like, dabbling in, into the underground music scene knows Cottonmouth Kings before they hear d or they're more familiar with Cottonmouth Kings. The average person, or you know, but why stop using the Cottonmouth King's name all of a sudden? You know, we haven't really heard much from Richter. We talked about it last week. Suburban Noise is going on their 25th anniversary celebration. They're starting early and they're going to be going into it next year, celebrating 25 years of Suburban Noise. And in the video, they advertise new music from Obnoxious, Mad Child, Big B, Kaleidoscope Kid, Long Beach Dub All Stars, Big B's Felons, uh, the Felons Club, Chucky Chuck, unreleased Cottonmouth Kings music, no mention of King Click, which Chucky Chuck is a part of, and they did drop a project already, but no mention of King Click. Um, a mention of Cottonmouth Kings. No word on what the audio is, if it's interviews, behind the scenes shit, actual music that never came out, which would be amazing because all the, think about all those hidden stashes that they put out. Like, I there can't be much unreleased Cottonmouth Kings music in the vault that I would imagine anyway. But the sub noise soldiers. Could they be coming back? DJ Bobby B's been on Twitch, spinning Cottonmouth King shit, did a Pacalika show, did a Saint Dog show. Bobby B would honestly be the last one I would expect to come back to Suburban Noise. If, if Cottonmouth Kings were to do it without Suburban Noise, I think there would be a, a more high, high of a chance of Bobby B coming back doing this shit, but you never know. Remember when ICP did the rise and fall of the Cottonmouth Kings? Like, what happened to the Cottonmouth Kings? They were doing their own investigation. Bobby B went the fuck off on that show, calling out Zinger, saying it's all lies, it's all bullshit. He was ripped off of life-changing money, all this stuff. So it seems unlikely. But as they always say, time heals everything, right? Time heals everything. There's division throughout the underground, you know, with a whole bunch of different groups. Cottonmouth Kings, sub Suburban Noise, the members of Cottonmouth Kings. We haven't heard of, heard from, or seen Daddy X in a minute. Dirtball dropped a fucking dope album a few years ago. What was it? I can't remember the fucking name of it. Uh, Skull Hollow. That shit was a fucking banger. <laughs> um, could we see Dirtball come back into the sub noise picture somehow, some way? Maybe via Cottonmouth Kings. I don't know. It's been we haven't seen Lou Dog in a long ass time. Taxman is up on social medias, but we haven't seen him do the Taxman gimmick in a couple years. Shit is brewing behind the scenes in the kingdom somehow, some way. I don't know. I don't have any inside information. And even if I did, I, I don't even know if I'd be at liberty to say. But I'm hoping, especially seeing d and Chucky Chuck possibly doing shit together again, seeing them commenting on each other's posts, that, Cottonmouth King's Facebook post where they said, do you want to see D-Loke and Chucky Chuck again together again? Because again, Chucky has vocally not been the biggest fan of D-Loke. 
but maybe maybe uh, attitudes are changing, egos are being chilled out a little bit. Who knows? But I, I I would love to see it, man. Suburban noise is a big part. A big part. Like I said, back in the day, it was psychopathic, suburban noise, and strange music. The big three of the underground back in the day. It was something to be said if you made it onto any one of those labels. And uh, I would just like, I'd like to see suburban noise really come back and do some shit, man. Whether it be with new artists, uh, working again with the older artists. Because, I mean, shit, we ain't getting any younger, man. <laughs> I know d and shit, Jay Rick, they're only a few years older than I am. They're not much older than I am. You know, some of these artists in the underground, they're pushing 50 at this point. Cottonmouth Kings dudes, except for Daddy X and Lou Dog, you know, early 40s. Early 40s or mid 40s, some shit like that. But yeah, I'd, I'd, li- I'd like to see Suburban Noise, Sub Noise Soldiers. Man, those Sub Noise Soldiers albums back in the day, especially that first one, was fucking fire. Chucky e. Chuck was a staple on those albums too. Don't get it fucked up. Chucky e. Chuck was a staple on those albums, especially. The second one, um, fuck was that second one called? I can't even remember. I'm trying to look it up. It's hard. Dude, another thing with Suburban Noise and Cottonmouth Kings, it's hard finding information online about that stuff. Dropping Bombs was the second album from Sub Noise. The second and last original album from Sub Noise Soldiers, because the third one was Blast from the Past, and that was just a bunch of remakes, which is actually pretty dope. Chucky Chuck and Saint Dog did two of America's Most Wanted. Not a bad cover. But there was some dope ass fucking flying high off dropping bombs. What was that? Dirtball, Chucky Chuck, Daddy X? That shit was a fucking banger. I fucking love that track right there. Pacalica was on that bitch too, flying high. Yeah, man. I'd love to see some shit pop off, like I keep fucking saying. But straight up, like I said, man, Sub Noise, Cottonmouth Kings, a huge part of my life. Cottonmouth Kings, one of my all-time favorite groups, top five, easily. (laughs) And that's just, you know, just, just that's just facts, son. But speaking of Chucky e. Chuck, he's still, uh, if you remember a few years back, he dropped an album with the DRP and Insane Poetry called The Nomads. Well, they're booking a tour for 2023, Chucky e. Chuck, the DRP, Insane Poetry, known as The Nomads. So be on the lookout for that, man. Chucky e. Chuck, staying busy. What is up with King Click, though? That's what I want to know. What's up with the Obnoxious album? I know we're getting the Obnoxious Mad Child album. I think they're still trying to build hype for Obnoxious for his album. And that's, it's, you know, the King Click was part of the rollout. This album with Mad Child's part of the rollout for the Sigaudio album. But yeah. We still got unanswered fucking questions, right? Yeah. But let's keep it fucking rolling. We fucking, we rolling. You see me rolling. They hating. And Twisted's gonna go on the psycho, certified psychos like tour too. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, man. Come on. I'm sitting here by myself, talking to a camera, and talking to y'all. I appreciate y'all fucking tuning in, man. I did get a couple fucking comments last week saying people were appreciating the no ads up on YouTube. That's what's up. But Twisted is hitting the Certified Psychos Leg 2 coming in December, according to a post that they fucking posted up with Twisted, Blaze, ABK, Cody Manson was in the video. Leg 2 is coming. Certified Psychos. 
I called this shit last week, son. I said that they need to fucking bring this shit. This should have been a nationwide tour right off rip, but maybe they weren't expecting it to be as popular or sought after as it is. I mean, I don't know why, man. I think people seeing that track list, seeing the footage from the shows, because everybody got a fucking, everybody got a camera nowadays in their fucking pocket. Putting that shit up on the IGs, TikToks, and all that shit. And the YouTube. People seeing the footage, seeing the show, seeing them throw it down for two hours. Man, and that set list that we went over was crazy. That was a crazy set list. Twisted is retiring a lot of those songs that they're playing live. And a lot of those songs that they're playing live don't normally get played at a Twisted show that much. So it's not like they're retiring the fucking We Don't Dies and the Rock the Deads. They, they've already explained this shit. They're, they're not retiring the certified classics. You can't. But man, I'm fucking... A lot of people are hyped for this leg two of Certified Psychos. And it's dope that they're actually doing a leg two of this tour because, I mean, come on, man. There's money to be made out here. And there's fucking fans, ninjas, juggalos alike that want to see this shit, man. Relive the early 2000s psychopathic shit. Straight the fuck up. A lot of classics dropped back in the day. One Less G in the Hood. Hatchet History. Fucking Freak Show. Mirror Mirror. Green Book. All that shit. Most tasteless. Come on, son. The Blaze EP. Fuck. Lotus. Black Rain. Tales from the Lotus Pod. The Riders albums. Man. A lot of dope shit back in the day. But let's keep it going with uh, the news. It's been confirmed that Woe the Weeping Weirdo the third and final seed of Yum Yum will be released Halloween night, 2022. Shaggy 2 Dope confirmed it on the Palcast last week that that it will be released on time. I made a post early. I remember the day I made a post, I said, will Woe the Weeping Weirdo be released on time? Somebody commented, Shaggy confirmed on last night's show that it would be. I went and peeped the Palcast, found the clip, and yeah, he did in fact say it would be coming out. So, whoa, the weeping weirdo. Three for three. Hopefully, right? Like, hopefully it is dropping. Like I said, Hollow Wicked hasn't happened yet. So, I don't know for sure, but according to Shaggy on the Palcast, it is coming. And if it does drop on time, this would make three for three this year. The fact that ICP even dropped three EPs in one year is fucking crazy. When they just dropped Yum Yum Bedlam last year. And if Woe does come out on Halloween, that'll make three releases in a row on time. Shout out to them for following through with the release dates. If this comes out on time. People are speculating who's going to be producing Woe the Weeping Weirdo. Mikey Clark confirmed himself that he did the Pug Ugly EP. I think we on, what was it, Wicked Vic, we had Shaggy the Airhead, Devereaux. Kuma might have did some production on there. I fuck with that Wicked Vic EP. Pug Ugly was, wasn't it? We'll see how Woe turns out. But how do you feel about the Yum Yum Bedlam era so far without hearing Woe the Weeping Weirdo yet. No word if it's going to, it's going to be on digital. Like the other two are, it will hit digital at some point, whether it be Monday, next Friday or not, who knows? Anybody could release music at any time. I've seen people say it would make more sense if it was on a Friday. It don't matter. This is the digital age. You can upload some shit, put it live right fucking now if you want. It doesn't have to be on a Friday. 
You could do whatever the fuck you want in this digital age. So it could pop up on Monday or today. It could be live today. Actually, I mean, shit, this fucking episode drops on Monday. I'm acting like it ain't Monday right now. Because it's not. It's Saturday. But anyway. Woe the Weeping Weirdo should be out. At least at Hollow Wicked. Um, I'm seeing people paying $60 for copies of the album. There are no physical copies that I've seen yet. I haven't seen any pictures. Nothing in the museum. Nothing like that. And people are dropping 60 bones for this shit. When probably by the end of the week, it'll be up on the vault for 10, 15 bucks. So props to y'all for dropping 60 on some shit that you know, that you know for a fact will be readily available. Just like the first two EPs. But shout out to y'all for paying fucking, let's see, two, three, four times the money for some shit that you could just get. And you're paying somebody that doesn't even have it in their hand yet. So, yeah. Shout out to those motherfuckers, man. Straight up. <laughs> the fuck, man? Just be patient. You know this shit's coming. Why, why drop 60 on it when you know it's coming? Anyway, I digress from that. Speaking of this weekend, fucking Fright Fest, Hollow Wicked, Bloody Sunday, Palcast, the Big Money Hustlers, Big Money Rustlers, movie showing and other shows that are happening this Halloween weekend. But the Palcast show did go down. That's the only show that has gone down as of this recording so far. The Palcast show, they did a live Palcast and then they had performances from Shaggy 2 Dope, DJ Clay, Hex, Trey Pound, Fat C, and Jordan Step. And that went down uh, in Westland, Michigan, at the Token Lounge. And if you notice, I wish I would have known about this last week, but I didn't. But Straight Jacket was taking off the Palcast Halloween show. I think to no surprise of anybody, really. <laughs> I would have been surprised if this dude didn't get taken off the show. But Straight Jacket was taken off the Palcast Halloween show. And this was posted, this was like a week, a week and a half ago at this point that this was posted. I just missed it. So we're talking about it this week. But he posted up on Facebook saying, make sure to show all my homies love and head out to this dope event. As you can see, I'm no longer on the event, but I assure you everything is all good between me and my pals. I talked to Shaggy and Keegan a couple weeks ago, and I'm pretty sure people can guess who had a problem with me being on this event. Hint, it wasn't Shaggy or the Creep, LOL. Anyway, we had a good talk, and it's nothing but love for my boys. That other guy can S a D though, LMAO. I hope y'all have a great show, and all those attending have a great time. Sheesh. And you see the headline if you're watching. The video version of this straight burning bridges, man. Now, let's look at it from a try to look at it from a couple different perspectives. This dude just don't give a fuck anymore. And he's just speaking the fuck up and clearly has a problem with Violent J at this point. This isn't the first time he's called out Violent J on some shit. And it probably won't be the last time that he's calling Violent J out on some shit. And, you know, like I keep saying throughout the show, through the history of this show, I really think that this beef really boils down to, at least on that side, boils down to Violent J. And he's got his, he's got his people who he rides with, or the people that are riding with him. And it is what it is, right? Like, it's just, it's him, and then he's got the people that ride for him. Again, you can't be fucking mad at people fucking riding for who they ride with. It's it's a, it's a shitty situation, slippery slope. I hate keep fucking talking about this shit, because it's so fucking, at this point, dumb, and who gives a fuck? Honestly, right? But straight got a fucking problem with this guy. 
And he's burning bridges. He got pulled from the Palcast Halloween show. I don't think he should have been surprised. I don't know if he was surprised by it or not. Anybody surprised by it? I don't see how you could be. Um, if you're talking shit about Jay and you're doing some shit with Shaggy, expect it to not fucking happen. That shit ain't going down, man. Like, come on. And it might be all good between you and Shaggy, but you got you got fucking Violent J, man. He's the one who calls the shots. And does the shit, man. And I'm sure it goes down on the other side. I'm just so fucking... I'll just be honest, man. I don't give a fuck anymore. It only hurts the fans. It only hurts the listeners. It hurts the fucking... Go back to the Cottonmouth Kings Rise and Fall episode that ICP did. They were talking about they're missing out on money. You're... Take the advice for yourself. I said it then. I'll say it again now. Take the advice for yourself. And this goes for both sides. It goes for both sides. Can't put all the blame on one side. I don't think it's fair. Even though the one side started it, put it out there publicly. Both sides are to blame for the fans missing out on dope shit. And hopefully one day egos can be put aside So the fans, the Juggalos, the Ninjas can have a dope-ass gathering again. We need real gatherings again. Gatherings aren't gatherings without Twisted Blaze. Tech 9, Cottonmouth Kings. Everybody needs to put all the bullshit aside. We ain't getting any younger and all that shit. And I'm sick of fucking talking about it. I don't know. I don't know, man. But I guess it is news and it, it it has to be talked about. I don't know. Just put the bullshit aside, man. Put the bullshit aside. Yeah, that's all I got. Fuck it. Buckshot announced a mob style Christmas going down in Louisville, Kentucky. 21st in Germantown. This is where he just had the Hollow Bleed show. It's going down. New Year's Eve. A mob style. How New Year's Eve stole Christmas. December 31st. Lineup incoming and it's ginormous. I mean, shit. If Hollow Bleed was any indication of what the lineup, how, how dope a show could be, we'll just have to see how this mob style Christmas show goes the fuck down. In Louisville, December 31st on New Year's Eve. Dope. So, as more info comes in on that, we'll talk about that shit for sure. And we got some upcoming shit. Some upcomings, happenings going on. Uh, Buckshot's UGA partner in rhyme, Boondocks, is hitting the road with rehab. Another thing I meant to talk about last week fucking didn't include it in the show for whatever reason just forgot but boondocks is hit in the road with rehab remember rehab the bartender song remember that shit i remember rehab hearing about rehab way back in the day before that song even blew up people were super hype on these dudes maybe the innovators of hip-hop i don't know but boondocks is hitting the road with these dudes in december for about a week and a half almost two weeks Illinois, Wisconsin, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Nebraska, Montana, and Texas. So go peep that shit. Boondocks. Rehab. That's a show that makes fucking sense right there. Without a doubt. And then we got new Triz. The deluxe edition of Baseline Cavi dropping November 11th. The project that he did with Mike Seven Summers is getting a deluxe edition And that'll be out, like I said, November 11th. If you haven't heard Baseline Cavi, that's just some fucking West Coast shit like a motherfucker. Get in that Lolo. Ride through that California breeze. Seven really killed, really captured that West Coast essence. Um, 
on that album with the production he provided for Triz on there. Really nailed it with that West Coast shit, without a doubt. So, Baseline Cavi Deluxe dropping November 11th. Dropout Kings getting ready to drop their first single off their upcoming album called Riot Music. That'll be dropping November 18th. Dropout Kings of Suburban Noise and SRH. I, I keep fucking forgetting to mention these guys, but these guys are dope, man. I slept on these guys. That EP that they put out, the Glitch Gang EP, was fucking dope. These dudes have range. It ain't just the trap metal shit that they do. They they slowed it down on that Devil's Playground track. God damn. I, I definitely recommend checking out Dropout Kings, that Glitch Gang EP, because that shit was a banger, man. And I'm looking forward to this new single that they got dropping November 18th called Riot Music. And then this past Saturday, Isham was up on LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio on Sirius XM for Isham's Wicked Hip Hop Halloween. Now, I don't have Sirius XM, so I can't even listen to this or wasn't able to listen to this. Um, hopefully somebody fucking rips it and puts it up on YouTube or some. But Ishan posted up a clip of a commercial promoting this. Talking about how he invented a style and influenced a lot of the Detroit hip hop music that happened. And it's on LL Cool J's Rock the Bells radio. If you don't understand how fucking dope this is. I'll try to fucking explain it to you. LL Cool J, whatever, regardless of what you think about LL Cool J, is a legend in hip-hop. Straight up. One of the dudes that brought hip-hop to the mainstream back in the 80s and for Isham to be on LL Cool J's Rock the Bells radio is, is fucking dope, man. He's going to be breaking down the history of the wicked shit on this show. Now, I don't know if LL Cool J personally reached out to Isham or whatever, but somebody reached out to Isham to get him on this show. Isham has been in documentaries. like He does get acknowledged every once in a while for his contribution for what he did for Detroit hip-hop and the wicked shit horrorcore scene in general, man. This was so fucking fire to see him promoting and be a part of. I love it, man. LL Cool J, a legend. Isham, a legend. Yeah. Hopefully, if you have Sirius XM, you were able to check it out. Um, yeah. But that that's fucking dope, man. Shout out to Isham. Props to Isham for, for getting that show on uh, LL Cool J's Rock the Bells, Sirius XM. Fucking fire. We got a couple album birthdays. Oh, shit. It's your birthday heavy metal kins celebrated the five-year anniversary of black god white devil if you don't fucking know heavy metal kings ill bill vinnie paz they are the heavy metal kings this album black god white devil featured gore-tex on damn near half the album and it's a banger of an album i bumped it um, on its anniversary day, actually. And this album still goes hard as fuck, man. I would really like to see Ill Bill Paz get back together, put out another album, maybe make Gore-Tex an official third member of Heavy Metal Kings because he, he killed it on there. And like I said, he was on damn near half the album, if not more than half. And Black God, White Devil, just a fucking banger of an album. So happy fifth anniversary to heavy metal kings black god white devil and then celebrating its 25th anniversary is not as multi-killionaire the devil's contract we were just talking about isham this is isham mastermind and tnt and their fourth album right life after death blasphemy do you believe multi-killionaire fourth album and this album, still a banger. 
I was bumping this shit as well on its anniversary. And this shit's... I love this album, man. This really like some grimy street shit from Nada's mixed in with that wicked shit. Produced by Isham. Isham's production in this period, he was relying less on the samples during like Dead Flowers, Do You Believe in God, fucking uh, Bruce Wayne and the Multi Killionaire album. And it was more of just him producing original music. And the production in particular on Multi Killionaire is banging. Mo Battis was on a few songs on here. The you could call him the unofficial third member of Nottis during this period. I mean, he was pictured in the fucking booklet of the CD and cassette if you have that shit. But yeah, man, Nottis, do you uh multi killionaire? Be careful what you wish. Such a banging opening track, Ballers Envy. Come on, I'm a Ballers Envy. That beat is so hard. Um, there's a couple songs that are just question marks, labeled question marks on here that are fucking banging. All my dogs is fucking fire. All praises due. Price on your head. Come on, man. Multi Killionaire, 25 years, easily a classic. I feel like everything, damn near everything Isham did in the 90s is a classic. And this album was a fucking banger. Happy birthday to Nattis's. Multi Killionaire, The Devil's Contract. And I appreciate everybody that's tuned in right now. Still, much fucking love. Don't forget to hit beneathdirt.com for all your Beneath the Dirt needs. Much love, y'all. I appreciate the support. I'm Ron Bone of the Beneath the Dirt Podcast. And until next time, I'm out. Peace.